This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon, and uh, today I'm going to talk about the good guy narrative, right? The, the Mr. Nice Guy. Now, I want I'm going to I'm going to have this whole conversation today from the the male perspective, and I my my encouragement for you, my offer for you, would be to if you are a female. Um, or maybe you know it's 2019. Maybe you go by a different gender. Then grab this and 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 put it in your shoes. However, it is fitting for you. Some of you it may not land at all, and and that's okay. Maybe you're thinking of other people. Some of you it may land. Some of you it may be for you, but you run such an external referent program that you think of other people rather than yourself. And so my encouragement for you, my my offer once again is to is to first check in with yourself and see where where this conversation lands with you and then after that, sure, see how it may land or, um, or or work with other people. But we're going to talk about the Mr. Nice Guy, the good guy, the guy that's always, um, you know, pleasing others and, and, and really is, cares about how they're seen in the face of other people, right? And the challenge with the identity of being, always trying to be the good guy is that's not always true or always the case. And so what happens is that if we identify as, no, no, I'm a good person, I wouldn't do that. It's like, if you think you're a good person and you can't, you're, you're not capable of, of, um, of, of harmful or evil or, or um, you know, spiteful or whatever things, like if you're not capable, if you don't think that you, you I would never do that, then you fucking don't know yourself. The issue is is that if we just identify as the good guy all the time, we don't actually recognize that we actually are doing a lot of those things that we hate in other people, but they're coming out in different ways for us. And so more often than not, the, what, what we're trying to give to the world, we're actually trying to get back in return. The people that are trying to motivate people are often trying to get motivation. The people that are trying to you know help people feel about self-love, they're trying to get self love for themselves. It's all this sort of stuff. It's really quite fascinating and interesting. If we watch ourselves closely, we'll see it. But the interesting thing around the good guy narrative is that until we disidentify with the whole idea of being a good guy and just be who we are as we are, right? Recognizing that there's good and bad and evil and, and beauty in all of us. We're all of it and none of it at the same time. Until we can really do that, we can never actually be a good person because a good person chooses. They're aware of their capabilities. They're aware of their scope of reality, of how they can act and react and, and, and communicate in the world. And then they're choosing to do what is morally right to them and their soul and their values in that moment, right? Taking into account themselves, the person next to them, community, the environment, etc. Now, that is a good person. It's a good individual because they have scope. The person who is delusional around going, oh, I'm such a good person, I would never do that. It's like, you just don't know yourself very well and you definitely don't know your capabilities because the idea that we reject parts of our, um, let's say our persona, right, that we have access to, A, it means it's going to come out in, in often passive aggressive type ways or, or um, you know, uh, ignorant ways where we're just ignoring stuff, you know, you might hear someone be like, I can't believe that person would do that, it's like, fuck off, you can't believe it, you've been complaining about that person for a little while, of course you can believe it, but you want to be seen that you see the good in everyone, and so because you see the good in everyone, you're actually ignorant, which is ignoring all of the other parts of them because you do it with yourself. It's the whole idea of how you do one thing is how you do everything and that's what it's actually referring to. And so the challenge here for all of us is is to be able to really see and catch ourselves when we're when we're doing something in service of ourselves but calling it in service of other people. Right? It's important that we see that we, and, and some people are on the side of the fence that everything we do is in service of ourselves. It's like, well, yeah, in some degree, of course. But 
with with a healthy perspective we're able to make decisions that is healthy for everyone or at least as healthy as it can be right and i say that in the sense that there's some horrible difficult decisions out there but the decisions need to be made as well it's it's not all fucking unicorns and rainbows and fairies because if everything was all unicorns rainbows and fairies they, they they would be boring they wouldn't mean anything they'd be nothing if that's all we had this is what we have to understand, is that we need scope. We need to know what bad feels like, whatever that is for you, to know what good feels like, whatever that is for you. If we don't have that scope, if we aren't able to experience reality through all of that, then we're actually only living part of our lives. And we're living a delusion. One of the most challenging things that we can do is is to go inside. And, and this is where having people that have been there before or walk no shoes or can help you work through this sort of stuff um, is both noble and, and courageous because there's a lot in our subjective reality that we have ignored or not gone towards the dragons as you may hear me hear me say them right there's a lot of things in that space that are actually going to assist us in our potential the challenge is, is that if we're so busy being identifying as the good guy we're holding ourselves back from our potential. Now, the difficult thing about that is that when we hold ourselves back from our potential, we're a cell, right? We're, a, we're one of seven billion cells, right? Like, like operating in the universe at this stage that, that I'm talking as humans, obviously. And the most honorable thing that you can do is that one little cell is live the healthiest, brightest, most potential-filled life that you can. And that way, the the whole system becomes healthier. But instead, that little cell is too busy thinking about what all the other little cells is thinking of it, so it's known as the good... Just forget it. Just be the healthy, true, honest, bright, potential cell that you are among the 7 billion, and other people... We'll see it, and then they will be inspired, if not some, you know, by you, maybe by someone else, to be their own healthy cell. But that's the responsibility that we have for our human existence, right? The responsibility to actually speak our truth, to apologize where necessary, and, and to, hey, how about this, not apologize where not necessary. That's the other aspect of that. Like, that's the other side of the coin. Because you can't have, you can't have back without front. It's not possible. You can't have back without front. It's like, you know, we think that it's different. It's not. Good and bad, it's the same thing. So when we reject one, we're rejecting the other. People go, how can you not have back without front? It's like, okay, I'm standing up. Point to my front. Okay, there's your front. Point to your back. It's like, yep. So where's the disconnect here? Where is the front not connecting to the back? If you take away my front, do I have a back? So this is the same thing. It's the integration of all of it. And it's fucking work. But as one in seven billion cells, you, the one cell, have this responsibility to stop bullshitting yourself. And the interesting thing is that when you stop bullshitting yourself, you stop tolerating other people's bullshit. Whether they like that or not, that, that's, that's up to them. But it's often one of the best things you can do for them. Because if you've been tolerating people's bullshit around you, you're just empowering them enabling their behavior it's really fucking inspiring hey don't want to upset them yeah you don't want to upset their egoic structures that they've built that you have no control over and think about that next time and act however the fuck you want to act but on that note i am out thank you very much for tuning in if you found this podcast beneficial it would mean the world to me if you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial uh, if you haven't already then jump on facebook search mood prep online join the group there we'd love to see you in there um and i do have my mood prep intensive coming up it's a two-day seminar here in canberra australia uh in um uh well in canberra yeah <laughs> it's the 9th and 10th of march you can find out more details about at on the seminars link at davidnixon.com.au otherwise that's enough from me you know the drill from here guys peace and pizza Kick today in the dick, slay the dragon. I'll see you guys soon. To be everything at once, be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbroken.
bridled and unburned.